Hi everyone, we've got a handful of headlines for today's Peloconis news. I've categorized them into life, social justice, drawdown, and wildlife. These stories are truly incredible and also reminders to me that conservation can actually work. All right, our first story is in our category of life. It's coming out of sciencedaily.com. Scientists discover new origins of life chemical reactions. Four billion years ago, the Earth looked very different than it does today, devoid of life and covered by a vast ocean. Over the course of, million of millions of years, in that primordial soup, life emerged. Researchers have long theorized how molecules came together to spark this transition. Now, scientists at Scripps Research have discovered a new set of chemical reactions that use cyanide, ammonia, and carbon dioxide, all thought to be common on the early Earth, to generate amino acids and nucleic acids, the building blocks of proteins and DNA. We've come up with a new paradigm to explain this shift from prebiotic to biotic chemistry, said Dr. Kristina Murthy, an associate professor of chemistry at Scripps Research and lead author of the new paper, published in the journal Nature Chemistry. We think the kind of reactions we've described are probably what could have happened on early Earth. I know that's a little oblique to conservation itself, but I do think it's really incredible. And I think as this research continues, it can help us understand our relationship to the rest of life on the planet. All right, our second article is coming out of the Washington Post. It's in our category of social justice. I'm really excited to see this. Um, I think it's very interesting. The largest Audubon chapter yet is changing its name, rebuking an enslaver. Seattle Audubon said John James Audubon's troubling legacy is antithetical to the chapter's values. One of the largest chapters in the National Audubon Society network is changing its name to distance itself from John James Audubon, the famed naturalist who also was an enslaver and strong critic of those who sought to free African Americans from bondage. In a virtual meeting with members, Seattle Audubon leaders described the action as a bold move to be among the first to change its name to promote anti-racism, diversity, and inclusion, and perhaps set an example for the 117-year-old society's more than 450 chapters to follow. The chapter's resolution to make the change was approved weeks ago by a 9-0 vote. In a statement, Claire Catania, the Seattle chapter's executive director, said the shameful legacy of the real John James Audubon, not the mythologized version, is antithetical to the mission of this organization and its values. So good for them for making that bold change. All right, our third category and our third story. Uh, This one is out of utilitydive.com. This is in our drawdown category. Newsom pushes for 20 gigawatt offshore wind goal by 2045. Says California must up our game on climate. (laughs) California needs to up our game on tackling climate change, including by... Uh, laying out a clear path to achieve its 2030 climate goals, as well as carbon neutrality by 2045, Governor Gavin Newsom said in a letter to the California Air Resources Board. The letter, addressed to CARB Chair Leanne Randolph, urged regulators to establish a planning goal of at least 20 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2045, as well as aim to deploy 6 million heat pumps in homes and buildings by the end of the decade. CARB is putting together the 2022 update to its scoping plan, which charts the state's pathway to achieving carbon neutrality by 2045, which is actually closer than we all think. (laughs) All right, last category here, two stories in this category of wildlife. The first one is out of uh, WFDD.org. There are 40% more tigers in the world than previously estimated. It is the year of the tiger, and a new population assessment offers some hope for the endangered species. An estimated 3,726 to 5,578 tigers currently live in the wild worldwide, up 40% from 2015, according to a new tiger assessment from the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN. Much of this increase is because of improvements in monitoring the animals. 
A fairly significant chunk of that 40% increase is explained by the fact that we're better at counting them, that many governments in particular have really sort of moved heaven and earth to do massive scale surveys. Luke Hunter, executive director of the Wildlife Conservation Society's Big Cat program, told NPR. The WCS is a nonprofit that has worked in roughly 60 countries around the world to save wildlife and wild places. Besides better counting method, Hunter also attributes the higher tiger numbers to an increase in conservation efforts by governments in the countries where they live. Tigers are still considered endangered and do remain on the IUCN's red list, which assesses endangered species. So having a better understanding of the tigers, but then also better conservation of the tigers is definitely a thing that we here at Pelicanus support. All right, last story here is out of LATimes.com. Endangered salmon will swim in California River for first time in 80 years. California's Chinook salmon haven't been able to reach the McLeod River since 1942 when the construction of Shasta Dam blocked the fish from swimming upstream and sealed off their spawning areas in the cold mountain waters near Mount Shasta. After 80 years, endangered winter run Chinook are about to swim in the river once again. State and federal wildlife officials this week collected about 20,000 winter-run salmon eggs from the Livingston Stone National Fish Hatchery near Redding and drove them for three hours to a campground on the banks of the McLeod River. Members of the Winnemim Wintu tribe, who have long sought to return salmon to the river where their ancestors lived, held a ceremony as the eggs arrived in a cooler. This is history for California that we've done this said Kaleen Sisk, the tribe's chief and spiritual re- leader. It's a real blessing. All right, I hope these stories bring some optimism and lightness to your month, and I really look forward to sharing more in the future. Thank you. Thank you.